is Geek Therapy Radio. What do we wait for? And now your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. How's it going, my geeks? We're going to jump into this as quickly as possible. So I'll just remind you that I love you all. This is an open dialogue. If you have something to add or correct, this is that's for all my shows. And you can be a part of the discussion in the YouTube comment section or on any social media. Just like, follow, and subscribe to Geek Therapy Radio on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, I don't have a Patreon because I have business sponsors like Audi. I wouldn't feel right double dipping. So all I'd ask of you is to consider subscribing, sharing, and not to be afraid of being a vocal participant in the comments section. My show is all about discovery and sharing knowledge, so I'd be an ignorant fool to assume I alone can provide that. Life is a museum and I am your mental curator, not an expert in any one exhibit. So let's share knowledge, love, and fascination with each other. This is an oasis from politics and the media status quo. You can dive back Back into that quagmire later. For now, let's geek out. Disclaimer this week, this topic, while fascinating, is going to delve into some possibly graphic aspects of our imaginations. So, I don't know, maybe not best for a five-year-old to think about. Okay, here we go. Strap in. What would happen if you put your head in an operational microwave? Okay, first of all, there are some pretty major variables in all of this that amount to the final answer being everything from A, nothing, you'll be just fine, to Z, more physical hell than you can possibly experience while dying a slow and painful death. So there's a, there's a lot of middle ground in there between A and Z. So first, so you can all sleep at night and not develop an irrational fear of hot pockets, if your home microwave malfunctioned and you reached your hand into a running microwave to retrieve your food, the brief exposure would do nothing, almost like running your finger quickly through a candle flame. The exposure is so brief that nothing would stick out in your mind. You'd feel nothing. However, if you left your hand directly in the microwave beam for any prolonged period of time, your skin would start to burn gradually, and the burn would be isolated to the area directly in the path of the narrow beam. That's why the platter rotates your food, so the beam hits everything as evenly as possible. It also bounces around a little bit inside the microwave, but that's neither here nor there right now. Another variable to length of exposure is the actual frequency of the electromagnetic beam. Now don't freak out, visible light is also electromagnetic radiation. This isn't like gamma rays or some other type that can cause cellular cancer from even brief exposure. It is irrational to fear your microwave and still go to the beach. The sun will actually give you cancer. Moving on. Some professional restaurant microwaves operate at 900 megahertz, the same frequency as the cell phones we've been using for years, albeit much, much more powerful. Most home microwaves operate around 2.4 gigahertz, the same as your Wi-Fi router, again, albeit at a much, much more powerful amount of energy. So again, it's the same as Wi-Fi routers and cell phones, it's just that microwaves are pumping out so much more energy at those frequencies. Quick side note, no matter the frequency, microwaves don't interfere with cell phones and Wi-Fi routers, unless it's extremely close to the phone or router, because the radiation produced is contained in a Faraday cage. That's the mesh behind the glass. Those little holes in the metal mesh are smaller than the beam. The beam can't easily escape, nor can other radiation, bigger than the holes, enter. You can test this by turning your phone screen on watching your signal bars, and then putting it into a microwave, but don't turn it on, your cellular signal and Wi-Fi bars will start to disappear. That's how a Faraday cage works. There are other phenomena in play with a Faraday cage, including radiation coiling itself around the mesh openings, but that's getting way too far off track for this discussion. Back to the differing frequencies microwave ovens. Back to the differing frequencies microwave ovens use. Without going into deep physics, the 900 megahertz beam penetrates more deeply than 2.4 gigahertz. You can also think of it like the way you could feel musical bass frequencies in your chest, but can't feel, quote unquote, high frequencies. Almost. The principle is the same. Lower frequencies penetrate the energy more deeply. Also, and very brief, because we're about to move on to the main course, microwaves work by making dielectric molecules resonate and vibrate against each other, water being the most affected. 
rub your hands together firmly and quickly, that's what microwaves are doing to the water molecules in your food or flesh in this case. I'm going to move on to the main point of this topic since we can go on for hours about the physics surrounding microwaves. So, take a short breather here. Wash the physics jargon out of your head for a moment. All you need to remember is that the physical human damage depends on the frequency, power, and duration of exposure. So, from this point forward, we are going to assume the worst case scenario for a domestic, run-of-the-mill, home microwave. Let's imagine we've disabled every safety mechanism and jammed our head inside the innocent wedding gift from creepy Uncle Fred and turned it on. So, 2.4 gigahertz are pumping into your face right between the eyes at about 1,000 watts for an absurd amount of time. Any reasonable human would immediately jerk themselves away within seconds, but let's just assume that you didn't. First, you'd get dizzy, your vision would blur, and you'd go blind in a matter of moments as your delicate retinas are destroyed. Shortly after, your eyes themselves would explode since they are mostly water. You'd likely still be alive at this point. Your eyes are very exposed compared to the brain shielded behind layers of skin and dense bone. The skin and flesh would heat first, but gradually enough to ensure excruciating, unimaginable pain as your brain also begins to burn as the radiation gradually penetrates. All the while, every cell and nerve ending in your skin would begin to rupture, causing the most intense physical pain a human can possibly experience without immediate death. Now, about your brain. Since the brain controls your entire body, as different regions begin to stimulate from the heat, your motor functions, speech, memory centers, etc. would go absolutely haywire. The pain would become literally unimaginable as your body spasms horrifically and your brain potentially fires off hellish nightmares, the likes of which would make Satan himself wet the bed. All the while, since every muscle would be affected by the spasming, you'd be oxygen starved as you simultaneously suffocate and have a heart attack as both organs palpitate uncontrollably. Now I said potential nightmares because the way your brain would start to malfunction could very well induce some sort of euphoria. But given the physical hell leading up to that point, I severely doubt it. Any euphoria induced by lack of oxygen, blood flow, or simulated fever would be induced after very vividly experiencing going blind, feeling your eyes explode, and feeling your watery flesh and muscles begin to boil. Okay, technically not boil, but superheat. It's different than technical boiling, but whatever. As anyone who's experimented with psychedelic drugs will tell you, the thoughts and feelings you lead into the high with dictates the trip you'll likely experience. So, if your last experience is your eyes exploding and being burned alive, I can't imagine it'd be a pleasant hallucination that follows. In the end, if the induced spasms don't cause your heart to stop and lungs to cease working, aka you don't suffocate and have a heart attack first, eventually the proteins in your muscles, but brain especially, would be damaged so severely that the simple process is conductive to life would cease. Your brain would cease the electrical functions required to make your biological processes work. So, TLDR, do not shove your head in a microwave for a prolonged period of time because you will die and the suffering will be unimaginable. Of course, I'm making another disclaimer here. Don't put any part of your body in the microwave, ever. I know that sounds like I shouldn't have to say that, but people have been sued for much less. Don't put your head in a microwave. At any rate, thank you for listening. I hope this has been a fun little mental exercise, and I hope you consider subscribing to the podcast on iHeart on the iHeart Radio app, Spreaker, iTunes, Pocket Casts. I love Pocket Casts. Uh, Google Podcast. I know there's a way to ask uh, your smart device to listen to it. Um, but if you consider subscribing to the podcast, that'd be wonderful. If you're in Houston. Uh, my show comes on midnights, 12 a.m. Sunday on KPRC 950 a.m. here in Houston. 
But again, the best way to fi- to follow the show is to subscribe to the podcast. I describe the broadcast as promotion for the podcast because it's almost 2019. Let's get real. So thanks for bearing with me. Hope you all have a great uh, week. Be sure to catch me on the regular episode of Geek Therapy Radio coming out later this week. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Be good to each other, especially yourselves. Peace out. 60 seconds on the way out. For Audi Central Houston. When you go visit Danny Posey, he's the GM over there at Audi Central Houston, make sure you tell him that Geek Therapy Radio sent you, and they'll take really, really good care of you. And they're going to take good care of you at Audi Central Houston, not because I told them to do so, but because that's just what they do. I've been a customer of Audi Central Houston since before Geek Therapy Radio ever started. And they treated me like family. They treated my dad like family. They treat everybody like family. It's service at Audi Central Houston like you can't even believe. And they've got an Audi for every budget. From the A3, and like I always say, to the R8. Whatever you want, Audi Central Houston has you covered. And you can start your search at AudiCentralHouston.com. So from the comfort of your own couch, you can cruise all the sexy, stylish, safe, fuel-efficient vehicles from Audi Central Houston. And then when you go to Audi Central Houston, you know what you want, and you can tell them that Geek Therapy Radio sent you.